Jürgen. Hello. Hello. Three league games without a win. Um, obviously, some concerns, but did last week's performance give you some encouragement at Brighton? Yes, it did. Uh, and no, because the um, first and foremost, what we are doing is um, uh, we want to win football games. And I think that was possible in that game. That's good. So it was not possible in the game, the Brighton game we played before that, uh, with the performance we put in. But that day it was absolutely possible. We could have won it. Um, shouldn't have lost it, but did. That's true as well. So after the game, directly, the disappointment is massive. The emotions are involved. You, you, there was a moment in the game where you um, kind of not like sad, but you, you, you know that um, yeah, we might play them again. So no problem. Um, Good. We made good steps in the right direction, but I didn't concede that goal, and and the way we conceded it was obviously not cool. So, um, so yeah, there are things in absolutely which we which we can use, which we have to use, and um, that's what we tried, obviously, and that's what we will uh, have to show tomorrow. So back to, to league action. Tomorrow is going to be Mo Salah's two uh, hundredth league appearance for Liverpool. Um, if he scores, he'll equal the record of most goals for the club in, the, in their first 200 appearances. He's one goal behind Gordon Hobson. Um, it's a fantastic achievement, but he, he's only got one goal in his last seven. Has he lost a bit of confidence in front of goal, or is there a bit more to it than that? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I've lost confidence. It's it's like strikers are all of them, and when when it's going well and it's going well, and other moments, then you have to go through these periods. I don't think that's a massive difference. We spoke last week in a press conference about it, all the changes we made and we had to make up front, and it, each striker um, benefits from from settled things, from patterns everybody knows about, and that is, is for sure a, was more a problem than than other stuff. But yeah, of course. Um, when you don't score for a while, it's two things. You might not be the, on your one hundred percent confidence level, but um, the, the desire to to do it is uh, grows every hour. So um, that's uh, that's it, and no problem with him scoring, breaking that record as well. So it's a, a record to be broken. So um, more broke a lot. So probably, hopefully, he can do that with this as well. <laughs> the transfer window is shut. Uh, you're probably delighted about that, so we can stop talking about it, except for today, because we're asking every every manager what they made of, of Chelsea's spending in that January transfer window. And what, did the, what did the other say? An awful lot of money. Well, <laughs> you're one of the early ones today, so I don't know as yet. Okay, then I uh, say nothing <laughs> without my lawyer. <laughs> no, it's a joke. I uh, know. Yeah, they have obviously. They, I don't know. I don't. I don't understand this part of the business. I like, what can you do? What can you not do? Um, how much? It's a big number. <laughs> in the last two windows, obviously. Okay, I can. The players they brought in. I didn't think once. Why did I do that? They're all good players. Really good players. Um, so from that point of view, congratulations. Uh, when you can do it, then. Obviously, they, they do it. Um, I have, but I don't understand it. But how it's possible with all the things around? But it's obviously not my, not about me to to explain how it works. Uh, hopefully, you all know exactly how it works, and then it's fine. They make it work, they? Yeah, but Graham knows that. Um, that's clear. So that's something else. <laughs> I'm not sure Todd Bowley is too much interested in that. Um, but uh, yeah, but that will happen. Um, um, at one point as well, that they will play um, well together. It's pretty much with the quality they have not to avoid. How quick it will go, I don't know. Welcome. I um, just wonder what the challenge is for a coach or a manager in facing the same team three times in the case of a couple of weeks, which is of course what we're doing. Yeah, we have Brighton and Wolves weeks, eh? so um, in between Chelsea. Uh, yeah, true. It's not a massive challenge, to be honest. It's a <coughs> And it will probably not be. They will make a few changes, obviously as well. So uh, because they had kind of a cup thing when Nunes and Neves didn't play together, for example. Um, maybe some other positions were slightly different to the league games they always played before, but but might have been because of rotation or the, or the competition. I don't know exactly. So there are obviously changes possible, which makes a difference. Um, apart from that, um, 
I'm not only since a few days in this country, it happened quite frequently. We played Arsenal twice in a row and stuff in different competitions. These kind of things happen quite frequently. So, yes, yeah, three times, but it was a lot in one week. So we had time in between. Um, they played games, we played games in between. So that's what, what you use them for to analyze. But it's uh, we know, obviously, both teams know each other probably after this uh, weeks now pretty well. Um, and anyhow, it's, um, it's a... Um, they are doing well and they work now longer together with the manager again and again and that's uh, obviously we will see that very competitive when we're in all the games very competitive and all. yeah let's give it a try again when you look across the, the fixture list over the, ne the next month Everton, Newcastle, Real Madrid Manchester United not too far away um, do you see that as a run that can inspire you to get back on track rather than a run of fixtures to worry about Oh, I don't worry about running pictures. No, not at all. No, no, no. We have to. We have to. We have to use the time we have in our hands to 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 improve, to 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 play the football we want to play, to to work on things we we think they are necessary and 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 or, or massively necessary for the way we want to play football. That's what we did now all the time. And then I understand 100%. And it, it, we, when we speak, you know, the first question was, we, we, we saw steps, definitely. We were much better in a lot of areas. Then in the end, when the result is not right, that overshadows everything. But um, we will fight for results. And there's a lot to go for. We have nine, nine to start, half, see, half the season only is played, um, which is um, crazy, but means... We have the second half of the season. We can we can do whatever we want um, in a positive uh, direction as well, and that's what obviously what the plan is. And but it's not about now thinking about the next fixtures. So just the next fixture. And this is tomorrow Wolves, and that's a that's a, that's a start in the second part of the season. And we decide how positive the outcome will be. Yeah. Um, Ethan, I was just wondering in terms of how honest Danny Robson spoke after the defeat to Brighton last week. Um, on the season in general and how the team hasn't performed as well as they would have hoped. Do, does the disappointment sort of linger more with the players and with you in situations like that because of your experiences and you deal with it and handle it maybe better than they can? No, directly after the game we had all the same level of disappointment. So that's how it is, but then you have, I'm not sure Robbo was in interview probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, how, how do you say it? he wears his... Oh, yes. So, which is good. So, no problem at all. But uh, uh, a day later or whatever, Robo would uh, have a different view on that as well. So, it's completely fine. But directly after the game, we are all massively influenced by the result. Um, no, it's not more a problem for the players than for me. Not at all. And yes, it, but it's not that the players as well. It's not that they walk the whole week, head down, stuff like this through the training. And that's, of course, very important. We have to. We, we, <laughs> we love this game. We do, we do, and the boys especially because they can play it still, and um, I only can watch it. But um, they, we all love it, and that's uh, the, the big part of it is the is the, the the desire to to win football games. That's really big in the moment when you when you don't achieve that. That's the hardest moment for all footballers on the planet. Will always be, should be. That's completely clear. But it's always the next day, the next session, the next game, all these kind of things, and we all know that. And I don't need my to use my experience in the business to to realize that. I know that anyway, and um, the boys as well. So that's fine. Um, it's really it's really okay. Um, but of course, we have to. It's it's different when you won the last five games, then you don't have to prove that you can win football games because um, everybody knows. So in this moment, we have to prove this point. That's clear. We didn't win enough football games the last few weeks in the whole season so far. So and that's what we want. And then it's not bad to feel really, really bad after a game because you don't want to have that feeling again. And that we have to use that as well. And that's what we try. Nice. Yeah. Again, when you've got a squad full of high achievers that have delivered so much and you've won so much. How difficult is it when really good players are going through what's obviously more than just a, a dip in form, but it, how difficult is it for them to sort of to refine their, their, their high levels? It's not, a, it's not as massive difference to, to, to lesser good players <laughs> if they go through, a, if they have a dip in their development or whatever that's um, difficult as well. It's it's just something you have to deal with. It's not it's not that difficult. As I, look, but it's not. Um, of course, we have. Um, I think we all see that uh, some players didn't exactly um, reach the level they they they, they reach for us. 
consistently over four, five, six years or whatever. That's that's not unusual. Happens to other players as well. Um, I think one of the best, really best examples ever is, is probably will be Marcus Rashford. So the season he had last year and, and, and the season he has this year, I'm, I'm not sure he he can really explain it. Of course, Eric and I are coming in new voice, whatever, a different approach, all these kind of things, of course, but it's not that Marcus didn't want to deliver last year, for example, I'm pretty sure, um, and now he's flying, um, and that's how, how it goes, but of course, the, the, the time in between these two extremes, um, you have to use, and you have to, 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 to work through it, and you have to fight through it, and um, self-pityness is not allowed in these moments, whether we are human beings, we all know, know these moments, where we think, oh my God, everything is going against me, but it's the only one person who can change it, it's really, it's yourself, and um, so, these kind of things um, can happen, will, or will happen in the future as well. Um, but of course, it's about to to limit the time and to to get back on track. And uh, the the team can help with that. It's like this: uh, the team performance is obviously a summary of the individual performances. But the other way around, it works as well because uh, the individual performance in influences massively the team performance. So that's that's how it is. Sometimes the team helps you through these kind of things. And if you have one or two or three of them, of these performances, then it's getting more and more difficult. But that doesn't change um, the view on the players in general, but you have to make decisions for the moment, for lineups and stuff like this. And that's uh, maybe a bit more of a problem for the manager because when can you, when do you realize, okay, that's not only a little dip, that goes no longer and stuff like this. Do you have alternatives, all these kind of things in general? This is more a problem, but for the player, it's a situation which he will face during a long career, um, not only once, but probably two or three times. And, um, and that's then normal. So you have to get through this and the players I know and if you're talking about my players then they will go through that definitely and we'll, we'll show again how good they are. And from a management and a coaching perspective when you go through the type of run that you're going through this season do you look at maybe switching things around and altering something and think well maybe we should change what we've, what we've done previously just to try and to break things up or do you, do you just think oh, no, but... <laughs> is it always organic? Oh we changed a lot. Of course, you have to change. You have to be changed in, in good periods as well. You cannot just go through it and say, oh, that works well. Let's hope nobody realizes it. Other teams adapt. Other teams um, um, realize. They, we do analyze. They do analyze. So if you do exactly the same thing for, for, for years, then it's, not, then it's not possible. But we, we always changed little things. Most of the time, these, the things we changed were direct improvements after that and that's obviously then really joyful as, and you can, as enjoyable um, you see that okay that's a good idea and then bam and it, and it really works out so that's in, in the situation now we said it we had a we had an idea for the, for the Brighton game for the, for the f weeks ago um, and that obviously didn't work out but we changed over the year we had we changed systems this year more often in other in other seasons it's two reasons one is we didn't and the main reason was we didn't defend as good as we should. And so if that's not possible and, and, and it looks like the boys in this moment cannot do it, then you have to help them with a different formation. And that's what we tried. So we played 4 for 2 quite frequently um, and these kind of things. And um, so that's part of the job as well. Again, how it always is in our business like this, you change something and it always has to work out. Otherwise, you look a bit silly. It's like, what, what was the idea behind that? And But the idea is always good. And sometimes, um, what you, how you can bring it on the pitch is not is not as good, but that's the, that's part of the deal. I cannot change that. I have the idea, or the, the, the we the, I have to make the change before we play, <laughs> and I know afterwards if it worked out or not. But I, I'm, that's now there is experience really important that I know these things can happen and it doesn't cost me confidence or whatever. It's just um, yeah normal. Carl is Carl hiding Mark, again. Yeah. Stand at the back. Yeah, generally it's looking better. The boys training. Yogo Jota had a full session with the team this week, but now not. The next day he had again a, a rehab session. Not because the session the day before just is part of a plan. Um, so I, I think he will be pretty much back in normal training next week. Um, Bobby's getting closer, obviously very good. 
um, Luis is, is is running now. That will take a few weeks still, but is, is now out on the pitch as well, running, which is um, uh, really good. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Ibu is out. Yeah, Ibu is out. Virtual is getting closer, but not ready for the game. Obviously, parts of training I think next week as well for virtual. Um, yeah. I think no, nothing else so far. But there's still two hours until training, so um, it can happen a lot. What's the nature of Ibu's injury? And bearing that in mind, obviously we have a look past it. Another centre back partnership has not felt the consistency and rhythm. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, no, Ibu has um, a muscle uh, muscle injury, and um, again, he didn't think it's it's massive. If it happened in the game, I asked him. Are you okay? Okay, after the game, treatment, scan, bam, out. Um, um, yeah, partnership, that's not cool. Always the, the, the changes, of course, you don't want to have that. Again, it's like these changes, you want to make them when you rotate or bring, bring them together, everybody in a perfect moment. So now it's, uh, but Joey and Joel obviously played together before, before that, so it's not, uh, not, not a massive problem, but it's not perfect. Like, that's, that's clear. So we don't have arguments on a pitch or whatever on the training ground. Pitch, if you think about it, think that, no, not at all. He knows that he's not flying. Um, he has to work his way back. That's that's how it is. So it's really it's now really helpful that we have Stefan to be one of us honest, because he's doing really well and you need this on his position. You need. You need um, a guy who, wants, who wins challenges, who protects everybody pretty much, who, who, but who plays football as well. It's really important. Fab did that for us for, for plenty of years. Absolutely brilliant. Best in position for a long time. And at the moment, it's not clicking. That's, that's true as well. Um, so we have to go through that. Nothing else, but he's not. <laughs> he's now not the happiest person on the planet, but he, he, he understands the, the decision, obviously. No more, move on to the FA Cup. Oh, sorry, we've got it. Can't. Not really a completely different game into FA Cup ties or something. Not really completely different, different lineups a little bit. How I said, when Neves and Nunes play together, it's, 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 it is different. It is different than um, so far in these two games, they shared pretty much the match game time. Um, no. No. I think um, um, Booth's coach is, is a coach who stands for a specific way of way to play, and they are now longer together. So that's what we will see again, I guess. Um, yeah, using the pitch, for big switches, stuff like this, um, speed, um, these kind of things. So no, I don't expect it too different. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed that show, I'm sure you did. If you want even more amazing Red Men content in your ears or in your eyes, come and join us over on redmenplus.com. We've got absolutely amazing interviews, features, documentaries, and even more of the shows like you've just watched. So yeah, head on over to redmenplus.com and become a Red Men Plus club captain or club legend. I promise you won't regret it.